Yeah, so hello everyone. This is the final talk for today uh, from Adam Shaya about Enrich Your Service Mess with WebAssembly. And I'll be sharing the recordings over here. Yeah. So Adam Shaya in the chat, if you have any questions or uh, suggestions or any comments, you can just reach out to him or ask in the Q&A session in the chat box. Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining this session. Uh, my name is Adam Saya. I'm happy to be here talking at DEF CONF US. Uh, we'll be talking today about service, service communication, and WebAssembly. So let's start. So first thing first, a little bit about myself. My name is Adam Saya. I'm a field engineer at Solo.io. It's a company specialized in API gateways and service mesh. So basically everything that is service, service communication is our domain. Uh, please reach me out on uh, Twitter, uh, email, or just my LinkedIn if you, you know, want to have a chat or that you, have, you guys have any questions. Okay, so as I said, today we're going to be talking about WebAssembly and service-to-service uh, -service communication, right? How to extend and enhance your mesh. So if you guys are familiar with Envoy, we're going to start be talking about it a little bit just uh, as an introduction. Um, then we're going to be talking about actually WebAssembly. And uh, then we'll be talking about Istio uh, that is based on Envoy. And uh, WebAssembly, we're going to go to a demo, and uh, at the end, we're going to talk about the future of uh, basically WebAssembly plus Envoy in this case. So yeah, let's start. First, that's just a quick reminder here about Envoy. So Envoy is really famous uh, now in the cloud native domain API gateway. Um, it's used everywhere, uh, either from service service um, type communication, for example, in service mesh, uh, Istio, uh, app mesh, uh, and others use it uh, for their data plane, or it can be used as an ingress gateway, uh, you know, securing your edge traffic if a client, for example, calls your, your service. Um, that one, you know, we can see in Istio again in their ingress gateway. Uh, Solo, we have a product called Blue Edge based on Envoy, um, and many others use it uh, as an ingress type gateway. So Envoy itself is HTTP2 uh, first. It's highly extendable. Uh, it has a lot of great features like rate limiting, uh, traffic shifting, traffic shadowing, and, and, and many more. Uh, and this is why it's actually, you know, it's great for cloud, the cloud native work. Uh, plus, it's kind of lightweight, so it really fits well with the sidecar type approach. Now, if you guys are familiar a little bit with Envoy, uh, the way you extend your Envoy is using basically building your own C++ filters. So um, that's from the beginning of Envoy, the way to extend Envoy to add your custom filters or custom behavior that you want to add, you will have to build your own filter. So that can be a hard process, especially if you're not familiar with the technology, obviously C++. And you also need to be able to build the product, uh, build actually Envoy, uh, be able to ship it, to maintain it, and then so many other things. So basically building a, a filter in Envoy was not a trivial thing. Uh, and this is why we've actually been talking today. This is, we'll be talking about the Wesson integration and how this simplifies. So, but before jumping into this, we need to talk about um, obviously uh, Wesson. So here again, that's just uh, basically the way you actually customize Envoy. So Envoy itself is, uh, if you think about it as, you know, uh, a middleware type approach where you have multiple filters, right? So you have your request 
hitting Envoy. Internally, you have multiple filters, and then it goes to the destination. Uh, so to customize it again, to customize uh, or add one filter to the filter chain, you'll have to build your C++, C++ filter, bake it within Envoy, and deploy Envoy with it. Right. And think about if you want to just, you know, uh, add dynamically a filter that's not possible, you'll have to basically change your Envoy and create a new deployment and go through some canary type rollout or anything, you know, especially if it's in, in the production um, that can be, you know, impacting your traffic. You, will, you need uh, basically to, to have a not, you can't have a dynamic type approach to add a simple feature, right? Here it comes the WASM integration with Envoy. So first WebAssembly comes from this simple idea of how can I write uh, something in any language, compile it to something super efficient and be able to run it on the client side. So that's the initial thinking, hey, I want to be able to run a process, uh, efficiently on the client side, for example, type browser. And I, want be, I want to be able to create it in any language I want, right? Um, for example, it's gonna be a game, a processing, graph, manipulation, anything you want. From there, we started thinking, okay, so if Wasm is super efficient in the client side, why not use it actually also on the server side, right? I want to be able to create some behavior um, completely with the language that I'm mastering, like for example, Java or actually C++, uh, Go, uh, JavaScript and so on. I want to be able to create my own custom uh, behavior or basically a backend code and compile it into a WASM module that is super efficient and be able to run on, on the backend. So that was the first step to where we are here today with Envoy. So that was the intermediate step. And from there at Envoy, started thinking, okay, so if we have this technology to be able to run something super efficiently on the backend and I can write it in any language, uh, why not use it basically on, on the filter chain? So any developer can just write own customization, add it to Envoy and that's how it extend it can stand actually Envoy uh, behavior, right? To add security or transformation or anything. So the way it works uh, in, in Envoy, uh, again, we have, you know, Envoy has uh, filter, filters and we have a filter chain. So we have multiple filters until the destination. Now we have a Wasm filter. So the Wasm filter is basically, uh, we can think about it as, as the VM that's running actually your, your, um, your Wasm modules. Uh, and, and it allows you to add your custom filters dynamically to Envoy. So you can write uh, a specific uh, filter to add a header or manipulate the body of the request or anything you want, add it dynamically to Envoy. And that will extend your feature there, either at the edge or between services, okay? So this is the integration between Envoy and WebAssembly. Now, because Istio, and take an example here of a service, service communication, let's take an example of actually Istio, right? Istio is based on Envoy. So if you think about Istio itself, uh, you have a control plane where it's basically, um, uh, you know, a set of your control plane side where you can push configuration. Like let's say uh, I wanna add some new routing. So you have some configuration that you push that the control plane understands it, transform it to something that the data plane understands, and that's how you basically do the routings or, or, or so on. So if you think about it, you'll have, um, so you have your control plane here, and then you have your data plane, and data plane itself is Envoy. So if Envoy itself supports uh, Wasm, right? So by extension, in Istio, we can use Wasm to, enforce new policies or to customize our service to service communication. Great. So from the control plane side, uh, so we have multiple components here again, and data plane is Envoy. So now let's see 
how basically we can extend um, uh, Istio with, with the Wasson filter, right? So that's basically what we're trying to achieve today. Let's say I have multiple uh, services, right? That I have on my cluster. I basically have a service mesh there. Uh, you know, I have like envoys deployed with every single workload and and that's, you know, Istio basically uh, securing like doing MTLS or uh, some sort of uh, traffic policies and so on. Now let's add an extra layer there to add uh, security or transformation and so on using WhatsApp, right? So the way we can do that is to, you know, have our technology to build a WebAssembly filter, you know, using WebAssembly, obviously. And then you have the user experience because Today, as of today, the way to deploy a Western filter into Envoy is not trivial. Even with Istio, there's a proposal there to add some easy way of doing it, but there is nothing out of the box to do this in Istio, right, or Envoy. So this is why we started thinking about this at Solitaire, and we have toolings that are open source to basically allow you to create your own filter and deploy it to your um, workload, either Istio workload, either an Envoy one, right? So the way it works is that think about it as a Docker type experience. So you first, what you, you should do is to write your own filter, right? We're using the language that you're mastering, uh, for example, C++ or, or Go, uh, to extend your mesh um, for example, adding a transformation or manipulating data, so on, then build it right into a Western module. Then we package it into an OCI image, like basically how Docker works, right? Now, when you have your OCI image, you can push it to a, an OCI type compliant registry. Um, for example, Docker registry is an OCI compliant registry and so many others. Once you deploy your image there, you can basically uh, use tooling, like for example, we have WASME, I'm gonna showcase later, that will pull this image from your OCI registry and deploy it into your workload. And that's how we extend, um, that's how we extend your service mesh and service service communication. Without this kind of tooling, it gets pretty complicated because today, as of today, if you wanna actually extend uh, Istio or Envoy to load your um, WASM filter, what you have to do is to modify basically the configuration of Envoy to basically point to an HTTP uh, file or something locally, which is, which is the WASM module and load it dynamically, right? So it gets pretty tricky there. And the easiest way of um, handling this is to have a process that basically package everything, publish it, and where you can pull it and add it to your issue deployment dynamically, right? And we're gonna see this a little bit later in, in, in the demo. Let's start. So what I have right now is a deployment of Istio in a cluster, and I have the booking for demo application installed there, okay? So the booking for demo application, is just a set of microservices that are um, representing basically a demo application. And what we are going to do here is to extend, uh, let's say the service service communication here to add a specific header, right? Uh, but this is basically just a demo, but think about it as if you wanna add, let's say HMAC signatures, or you wanna add a custom header, like security header, or remove some uh, sensitive data, or uh, think about, manipulating traffic, for example, do uh, another layer of custom uh, traffic shadowing or, or so on. There's so many possibilities there, okay? Okay, so let's look at our cluster. If I look at all the services I have deployed right now, uh, what I have is a set of um, demo applications, right? So that's the one the book info application there. And then I have Istio installed again, right? And I see that every single pod here uh, has a sidecar injected the way Istio works to have a sidecar like Envoy within every single pod. 
And uh, that's what you're gonna do right now is to extend the data plane of one of the services to add a custom filter, okay? Right now, to do this, so let's do a call to one of the services and see how it reacts. So I'm calling one of the services, right? And I see basically some headers that I'm receiving there. Let's add a custom header, okay? That's a simple scenario there, adding a custom header. To do this, let's create a custom filter. And we're gonna use WASME for that. WASME is basically an open source tool that you can install today that will work with your Istio deployment uh, where you basically install WASME um, and then we're gonna see how, how we're gonna use it, right? So here I have WASME already installed. I'm gonna do init, right? To initialize a new filter repository, I have to pass what language I wanna use. Uh, in this case, I wanna use TinyGo. Uh, basically it's Golang. Um, yeah, forgot to put dot just to say here. And then I'm gonna say, okay, I want it for Istio. Now I have my filter here. So I have this couple files here that will basically, actually, uh, that is my filter here. I'm gonna modify the main file. So here, here it is. So here it is. Um, if, you, if we look at basically the, the filter here is super simple. Uh, you have to override some functions to add your custom uh, behavior. In this case here, what I want to do is to add a custom response header to my services. And what I'm gonna do here is just use, let's say devcon.us as the header name, and it will have a value, hello. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, once I built this, once I wrote this, I need to build it. And for that, I'm gonna use um, was me build. Okay, so let's build and I give it a name. So we have to give it uh, basically do, the same way you build a Docker image. Um, you have to give it like a tag, and then after we're gonna use that tag for to push it. So here, let's say let's call it uh, devconf, right? That's pretty much it. Think about it as Docker, right? I build it. It's gonna take some time to build the filter. And once it's built, now we can just push it to uh, WebAssembly Hub, which is uh, kind of the same Docker experience you have with an OCI image. But you can push it to a private repository, let's say within your company, you don't expose all the images. You can just bootstrap like a Docker, um, like a Docker type container registry and uh, image registry, and you can just push your um, filter there. So now let's do was me push and give it the tag of the image we used here. Let's push it. Okay, so let's see what happens here. It's just a tag issue. Okay, so I think I had the image before. Um, maybe this is why. But let's say, uh, let's say I I pushed my image now. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I have it pushed. That's great. Let's check. WebAssembly Hub, right? So WebAssembly Hub, uh, you can just go and uh, create an account for you. Here I have my account already. I can check all the images I have pushed. 
And I, here I see the, the DAVCONF image that I just pushed right now, right? Uh, 31 seconds ago. That's the one that I just pushed, uh, which is basically the WASM filter I'm gonna use into my ACO deployment. Great, now I have this pushed. What I'm gonna do is to deploy it, right? So I think I called it uh, dev conf, and I think this is the tag. And that's pretty much it. So this behind the scene will create your uh, Envoy filters the way basically it works today in Istio to deploy a uh, Wasm filter. You create like a, an Envoy filter. The Envoy filter is the Wasm extension uh, part configuration, and then that needs to point to your Wasm module, right? So the way it works here, we basically package, we load the image from the registry, we uh, mount it on your service, and then we create the Envoy filter to point to that binary. Uh, and that's what basically what me uh, is doing now. Uh, another thing, we can also customize where we want to push these filters, right? Um, I mean, deploy them. Um, you can deploy them on all your workloads or on a specific tag, let's say only a specific application or a specific version of the application, right? In this use case, I just deploy it everywhere. Okay, now that this is deployed, um, let's do a curl again. There you go. So we did a call right now to our service and see that we have the extra header, right? Uh, that we just added through our filter. It's an easy way of extending your mesh. That's the simplest way of adding uh, basically a new feature or new behavior between services. And again, uh, that's through WASMI and simplify a lot the way you deploy, um, you deploy any, any new filter to your service, service um, basic to your service mesh. Um, now, in terms of what's going to happen in the future with WASME and service meshes in general, uh, talking about Istio itself, there's a proposal there to have an API uh, where it actually does quite exactly what WASME does. Uh, so you have a Docker image. Uh, that contain your OCI, but this is actually, that's, it's missing the part where you push it to a, an OCI registry, but it's actually have a, a Docker container containing your Wasm filter. And then uh, you have some, you know, CRD that you deploy. It's gonna take that image and deploy it to your workloads and, and point some configuration there. Now, uh, so that's that's coming in a, one of the newest, newer version of, of uh, Istio. Uh, so that's basically the, the short-term kind of new feature that's coming in Istio. Uh, but there's other things like, for example, here at Solo, uh, we have uh, something we call, we call GlueMash that supports uh, multiple clusters. Uh, think if you have, let's say, 100 clusters, right? And uh, you have multiple services across multiple clusters but you want to customize, let's say, service service one in cluster one, talking to service uh, F in or G or whatever in in, in cluster ninety nine, right? So to have cross cluster communication modification through Asm, we have something called again Blue Mesh, and using a CLI like um, Mesh CL Wasm, you can deploy. This filter across multiple clusters to achieve to achieve this extension not only within the same cluster but across multiple clusters. So this was uh, an easy introduction, I hope, to what you can do with Wasm and Envoy. Um, that's an example here it was with Istio, but think about it. That will probably work with every single uh, Envoy type deployment, right? Envoy itself just need some configuration to point somewhere to load the Wasm filter. Um, yeah, so it's really powerful. It's dynamic. Uh, it doesn't require 
uh, workloads to be restarted or or anything like that. Um, it's um, it's a great way to customize your service mesh because obviously you don't want to write a C++ uh, complicated filter and maintain it and build it with Bazel and all that. Uh, have only like having an only specific Wasm filter doing exactly what you need is the best way to extend your service service communication. With that, thank you for joining this session. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure talking here at FCONF US. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions or just want to chat, um, reach me out on, on Twitter or on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to have a conversation. And thank you all. If you have any questions, I'm here. Um, thank you very much, uh, Adam, for this wonderful talk and demo. Uh, we, I do not see any questions in the Q&A section at the moment, but you can reach out to him in the in the this uh, breakout room link and also his Twitter or LinkedIn account. So, if you have any questions, so Adam, you want to say something? Uh, yes, thank you all for, for joining the session. Obviously, if you guys have any questions after all, uh, I'm happy to answer them either on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me easily. And thank you for inviting me. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, it was wonderful presentation and great demo, actually. Yeah, yeah thank you. So we are at the end of today's uh, uh, schedule for DevConf. So tomorrow also is a great line of uh, talks are there, a great presentations are there. So looking forward to that for tomorrow. And yeah, signing off for today. See you all tomorrow. Stay safe, stay